fun that isn't us. Uh, the, the next thing that's coming up is what happens if you were to take four people and just make up a random movie based on a prompt. And I'm very excited to see where this goes. Are you excited? I, you I am super excited. I, uh, they, they performed last year, uh, I believe it was last year. We've done all but one die laughing. Okay. I know I've seen it at some point and die laughing, but uh, they, they come back every year and every year I'm really, really excited to watch them do the absolute ridiculous stuff that they are about to do and it is a good time. So. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for a very, very warm welcome for the Movie Machine Podcast. It feels like forever since I've been on stage. All right. I know, right? But yeah, we're, we're this is the Movie Machine Podcast from Hot Chocolate Media. Uh, we get random prompts from the internet, from this plot generator to make a movie. And then we're gonna make two movies in 50 minutes because it's kind of fast. And uh, with us we have our guest Matt Kesson. But then Ben here is gonna moderate and take over from here. But thank you all for being here. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Movie Machine Podcast, where we make up a movie for you really fast based on a prompt from the internet. And we are here at Live uh, Die Laughing 2019. Um, we've got a crowd. For, for, for those yeah. listening to the podcast later, Thank there's you. like 90 people in the audience. Yeah. 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 More yeah. like 900. Yeah. yeah, Jacob, you can like multiply. That. Here, at, here at 10 a.m. Right. on a Sunday morning. Yeah, so, yeah it's a blowout. So I am joined by uh, three members of the Hollywood Elite. Uh, our writer is Kyle Decker, who is the YOLO speed consultant on Shazam. Yes. Our director, Jacob Gulliver, who is the only person who saw Wonder Park. <laughs> and uh, our producer, Matt Kesson, who is Tim Burton's Flactor Creep on Dumbo. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was really satisfying. If, if you need, like, if you have a nerd friend that can explain that joke for you. That'll be fine, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I feel like the audience is going gonna, is gonna to be on board. Okay, and so the theme of the story is parody action. The main characters are an obsessive inventor and a conformist merchant. The major event of the story is promotion. I'll All read right. that again. No, I, I got it. So, so you have two and a half minutes. Yeah, so it's time, Hollywood, you know what it is? Yeah, it is time for a, a hard, gritty action remake of The Nutty Professor. <laughs> <laughs> so Blubber is going hardcore, and this time it's fighting crime. So we got The Nutty Professor, you know, some real comic greats have, have played The Nutty Professor in the past, you know, uh, Jerry Lewis and... Uh, uh, the guy from Beverly Hills Cop, because I have got so little Eddie sleep. Murphy. Eddie Murphy, <laughs> I've forgotten his name because I'm sleep deprived. They they did excellent jobs, but it's time to cast a new, young, up and coming comic in it. So that's what I'm hoping. I'm, I'm writing a vessel is full of jokes and everything, but it's also kind of a form built to improv. You know, like Eddie Murphy would just fill movies with his own joke and shtick. So most of the action of the Nutty Professor and stuff I'm writing it, but. The real key is is he needs a really good. The the merchant is a salesman who is trying to sell Flubber as like the next tool in crime fighting, and so the the merchant he teams up with is the marketing director from a big, like arms manufacturer. Because you know what Hollywood needs is more movies that promote the military industrial complex, and uh, so they're going to team up and 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 make less than lethal weapons. For the police to use, but the police don't believe them. So in the plot of the story, they become vigilantes using blubber-powered weapons to fight crime, and through the whole thing. And but who's the real enemy of it is, of course, uh, the big gun manufacturer. We'll call that that uh, the big gun manufacturer executive trying to stop the nutty professor and his uh, less than lethal uh, weapon salesman for cops. Uh, is going to be called uh, uh, Magnum Justice. It's going to be the name <laughs> of the character. It's the guy who owns the arms manufacturer that's trying to stop him. So that's kind of the story. It's, we've got the nutty professor who's invented less than lethal law enforcement weapons and his, his marketing genius friend who's going to try and sell it. And when they get turned away, they become crime-fighting superheroes. And the name of the... the uh, the movie is uh, 
Uh, Nutty Professor 2, Back to Justice. I don't know how many Nutty Professor's movies there are, so we'll just go with two. And that's what I got. Okay, so uh, you pitch the Nutty Professor reboot, which is also titled as a sequel. And uh, so Jacob, you get the script. Um, you notice that he uh, frequently just switches between flubber and blubber at multiple points. <laughs> but um, other than that, so you've got your, your, your script. Uh, so how, for, how are you gonna make this movie? Well, you know, it's, it's really not my place to say what's, what's in the script since I'm the director, but uh, there's some stuff here that needs some work. Maybe our, our producers can come down come down a little bit on uh, what, what exactly is staying and what exactly is leaving. Well, sure. Uh, what, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to shoot this uh, very much like a comedy. It's going to be lots of wide angles. Uh, it's going to be um, very wide lenses as well, so we're going to have everything in focus pretty much at any given time. We're not going to get real deep into the art, artful shots or anything. Um, but we're going to do lots of slapstick gags, uh, a lot of practical effects. Um, so like, you know, falling through walls and like beakers and stuff falling over. And um, if we could have like a comedy animal, uh, that would be fantastic. Maybe a monkey or like a dog. Um, any, any comedy animal is acceptable, <laughs> I, I really think. That would make me very happy. Um, and then uh, I think for our, our lead, we need to do something to kind of shake it up. I would like to cast Rebel Wilson as our Nutty Professor. I think she would be amazing. She's an incredible physical comic um, and would be really, really great for, for a role like that. Um, and then for our military industrial guy, we're gonna cast Ty Burrell. Uh, he would be great. He can also do that kind of physical comedy, but can be very like, you know, stiff and I have all the authority and, um, you know, that kind of a, a behavior. So I think I'd be pretty happy with that. Um, I, I definitely want there to be some elements of like travel or like you know a goal that they're sort of chasing after in this. Um, I don't I don't know that the the stakes are really high enough as it is. Maybe there is something that you know it's a conflict between you know do I make this cool thing for military industrial conflict uh, complex or not? Maybe something like that. Um, but uh, aside from that, I think you know there's some some good bones here, and we really need to. I really need the studio to say yes or no to specific things before I can I can make a hard decision on that. All right, and I guess that segues into our producer. Yeah, Nutty Professor Two. Nutty Professor Two. Yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. It's a great idea. I love it. I, mean, I think it's got legs. Uh, there's a couple changes we are going to need to make, however. First of all, um, we we we've got both of your casting choices. Those are fine for the villain. Uh, we have we have John Mulaney um, doing his doing his doing kind of his spider ham thing, and I know this sounds like a strange choice for a villain, but stay with me. I can explain. I'm not going to explain, but I want you to understand that I can. Um, so um, so John Mulaney is a villain. We've got that, but here's the real thing. Um, when we got the rights to the, to the Nutty Professor, when we got the intellectual rights to that, we also. Uh, got the rights to My Favorite Martian, uh, My Living Doll, and of course I Dream of Genie. And uh, these of course are completely unrelated properties, but, but, what if they weren't? What if we made a weird 50s and 60s comedy crossover universe? The kids love crossover universes. So, so, we'll stick with the basic plot. We'll stick with the flubber and the non-lethal weapons, and blah, 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 blah. But we need to get some cameos in to, uh, with, 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 from My Favorite Martian and from I, I, I Dream of Genie. And so, just to set the stage for a multi-film crossover franchise, and, and then eventually they will all they will all team up, and it won't fail. It can't possibly fail. Did Justice League fail? Moving on. Um, so, uh, the, dark universe. the dark, yeah, the dark universe. Everybody loves the dark universe. I forget what it is, but it is extremely popular. I'm led to believe. Is that the thing with the? That's the. That's, that's the that, thing with the mummy. And that was the universal. That was the universal yeah. reboot that it that, had, that it everybody had loves. The mummy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and so so obviously it's a it's a it's a proven quantity that can't possibly fail. So that's a, so that's what we'll be doing as far as as far as production. Uh, we uh, we we will be uh, we will be filming in uh, we will be filming in Italy because it's cheap, um, and also I like Italy, and uh, and so that's the that's the basic setup as we as as we have it set up. Now as far as the now the script is fine, uh, you know we'll go through the usual the usual committee rewrites. <coughs> Again, committee rewrites, a plan that can't miss. Um, but other than that, we're good to go. All right. So, uh, <coughs> what budget am I writing for? Oh, yeah. 
Budget? Oh, uh, seventy-five dollars. <laughs> seventy-five American dollars. The rights to I Dream of Genie were no joke. Just so, yeah. Okay. But how are you? Okay. So, so you have seventy-five dollars and whatever you're willing to spend from your sweet Shazam writing money in order to make this film. Sure. So I mean, I was I was not a right. I didn't get full writing credits in Shazam. I'm just the YOLO consultant. I, I made sure there's a requisite number of uh, dabs in the film so that the Gen, Gen Z would buy tickets. And, well, you have that Whatever one. other young things kids do, the, the, the yifs or whatever they're called. I don't know <laughs> the, what the, like, they like, the, they like snort cheese or something, right? That's you what should, kids are You should totally Google things. image yif. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another plan that can't miss. We're all about plans that can't miss tonight. All right, so. I mean, since we're 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 just getting the actors are just hanging out with us and we're play acting the movie in my my den because we can't actually make a movie with seventy five dollars, but it's really cool having John Mulaney and Rebel Wilson hanging out in my den. So I'm joining it, but I'm gonna pitch the idea because we have all these other properties. Is I want to be a team up superhero movie, uh, but low budget. And they're fighting with like. Things they make at home, very Home Alone esque vibe, and maybe the Nutty Professor all makes them the irons the rubber to the bottom of their tennis shoes so they can jump high, and makes like flubber shields that they can use and everything. And and oh, we can't do the flubber. No, the flubber's out. No budget for flubber. No rights for flubber. We we can't just pretend they can jump high. No. Oh. No, that's out. Okay. Again, no explanation. All right, well, I'm gonna call this the Suburbanauts. We're gonna really, I'm, I'm kind of deflated right now, but we're gonna really play up that they're like really fighting for that classic 1950s Leave it to Beaver community and everything. And if we have the budget for it, I will throw in a giant robot that attacks the city and they all have to form a giant Voltron thing to fight it back. But if we don't have a budget for that, I guess that can't happen. That's what I got. I'm sad. Okay, so Jacob, uh, you have significantly less money to work with, yet somehow you've gotten all the actors you've requested are still on board. So yeah, well, I can make this. Yeah, I mean, part of it is that like after I found out that we, we only had 75 bucks to make the movie, I took out a bunch of loans. Well, I say loans. Uh, I borrowed some money from the mob. Um, they're going to help me fund this movie. So we got we have about $20 million. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a bunch <laughs> of... Uh, um, a bunch of like younger comedians. I, I love the like Justice League comparison because now we can get like the Justice League of young comedians, like up and comers that are, are getting real popular, and put them in. Um, and then we'll kind of like, since it's hard to like gauge what, what rights we actually have, we're going to kind of make references to little things that could be picked up on later. Uh, if people like the movie and want to jump in, if people don't like the movie, then you know it's, it's okay. We had some great bits and stuff. So, um, the, the Rebel Wilson character is still going to be like a, a nutty professor, or we could go with a nutsy professor if we don't end up, you know, with, with the exact rights. I don't know if that was... If we, oh, no, it's just the plumber. We just can't, we just can't do the Okay, plumber. all right. So, yeah, if we have the nutty professor, she's still the nutty professor, uh, but there's going to be a group of other scientists that she works with, and maybe somehow they accidentally create this, like, splintered universe a la Spider-Man, as you're, you're referencing as well. Um, with all these different like properties and things. So uh, we're gonna get um, a Parnanan Sherla, we're gonna get uh, Billy Eichner, uh, and we're gonna get uh, Ron Funches, and they're all gonna be this like team of scientists working together um, to you know try and develop stuff, and they're all connected to this. Question, yeah. fat or skinny Ron Funches? It doesn't matter, he's still okay. hilarious. Um, <clears throat> we, we, we can't afford fat Ron Funches. <laughs> So um, they're all going to be like developing their thing and they'll all have some sort of specialty and then they end up having to work together to uh, avoid getting absorbed into this military industrial complex and maybe that's how our tie into these other potential properties ends up happening. Um, I, I, I talked to Ro Rosa Salazar the other day, uh, aka uh, Alita Battle Angel herself, uh, and she's definitely interested in uh, an I Dream of Genie remake, so if there's, a, if there's something there. She's ready to do it. Does, does her contract still require that her eyes be made super terrifyingly big? No. Okay, good. All right. So uh, we're going to go back to our producer. Um, so they made lemonade out of your lemons that you gave them. Um, I beg your pardon. 
I the am with dollars. I am with the Hollywood studio system. We create magic. Okay. Also, there are other people involved, but mostly the studio system. So uh, you have two and a half minutes before this movie goes out the door. Okay. Um, all right. Well, no, this sounds this all this all sounds great. Um, we. Uh, Okay, I was I was listening uh, to what, what what the director has been saying about uh, about spiders and funches and so forth, and I I I I understood uh, an amount of it totaling I would say zero. And but this is what the kids are into. You're telling me the kids the kids the kids buy this from this what I understand funches and the spiders and all that sort of thing. Great, great. Terrific. I went undercover at a, a fidget spinner convention. Oh yeah, that's how I got my information. I've heard about fidget spinners. Are those are those like Beanie Babies only? More so. It's what the kids are in you too today. Uh, excellent. They taught me how to flip a bottle that was half filled with water and it could land on its upright. Keep talking, kid. This yeah. is gold. Um, the uh, I yeah. still don't know what yeet means, but I'm more confident using. That's it. what I was trying to think of. Um, yeah, no, this sounds great. Print this. This is a uh, this is this is good business. We got the we got the team up thing going on. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to throw uh, we're gonna throw we're gonna throw a gala about it. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna rent out you know all all the all the all the big theaters in Hollywood. Usually we would just rent one big theater in Hollywood so that everybody would go there. But this way people will go to different theaters and it will be confusing. And upsetting. That's a novel idea. Multiple Thanks. Theaters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, and nobody will know which star will be at which, and everyone will be disappointed in the end. Um, but uh, but but it'll be a memorable experience, and that's what we do: is we create memories. So uh, so yeah. So I think uh, I think we're in a good place. Uh, let's let's put it. All right. So I'm going to put this in the movie machine, uh, which sounds like cartoon bounce noises, and. Um, so, so Jacob, you were able to get that extra twenty million dollars to help make the film. Um, the seventy-five dollars that you got was still for marketing. So it is, even though you have a gala in thousand theaters, it is only being released in one theater, uh, which is the producer's house, um, which he may have bought that mansion with the money that he was going to spend on this movie. Um, that cannot be confirmed without looking at the books. Um, so uh, this, yeah, so. People don't believe the stone comes out because only one, like eight people see it, but somehow you're still able to finance the entire universe. And so like as more and more of these films come out and it becomes this urban legend, like what happened to that movie that started? It's like that Jerry Lewis movie with the clown and the right. shits. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this, and that's, so, exactly that's a real movie, movie, movie that's never been seen the light of day. And the day the clown cried. Yeah. And so this movie, you know, has a, a lot of people make jokes about the fact that they're making this cinematic universe and the fact that they're still being made because just someone is really passionate about making these and is really good at making oh, it. Oh yeah, mobsters love it. Yeah, exactly. So um, cinematic universe, you know, it falters for a really long time until uh, you finally hit your big break, which is uh, the Fonz Shark Jumper. And that becomes a huge hit and really um, propels your cinematic universe uh, in fact, Disney then just buys the Fonz and joins a different universe. And um, I'm not going to say his power level is, you know, the highest. But in comparison, he, he gives him a little extra bit. So, yeah, you create a whole urban legend with your film. And you make an inexplicable universe. Uh, this film, I guess it makes its budget back because eight people saw it. And so you made Which more I return to the month. Which, <laughs> I, I, oh, you didn't get your money back, but he got it. Uh, the producer got his money back, seventy-five dollars. Success, complete, so, um, total success. Yeah, Jacob. No, you're you are. Uh, you need to do some favors for them quick. Um, that being said, you each have one and a half minutes to go back, and make any changes, um, anything you want to do to make this film make more money, or call it art and keep it the way it is. So it, it's occurred to me that my my cinematic vision to appeal to Gen Z has been co-opted to launder money by the mob. And it's really depressing to me. Uh, you're one to capture Gen Z with a Nutty Professor remake. Yeah, but I've, I've re I, I think I know how I can really capture the hearts of Gen Z. Um, I'm gonna convince, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to, so our, the fa financier that Jacob um, got his money from, I'm going to uh, go to his house on the day of his daughter's wedding and ask him to release 
give the film a wide release in a thousand theaters so it's real and I'm also going to retitle it to appeal to Gen Z to a dad will do it and that's <laughs> my changes okay uh, oh yeah I, I, because because when I go to that guy on the day of the, uh, his daughter's wedding he can't tell me no so I got it in a thousand theaters for a full run wow okay uh, yeah. uh, Jacob a dad will do it I mean that title is, is pretty bad, but uh, I'll leave it up to the producer whether that stays or not. Um, and also, what are you talking about? The mob doesn't launder money. That would be a huge waste of dollars. No, they like kill people and steal it and sell drugs and then they finance us. Oh, I, um, I, sh I shouldn't have said that. Uh, anyway, so uh, our movie is, um, uh, yeah, no, I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, and uh, if you don't see me in the next few weeks, just uh, assume the best. <laughs> All right, our producer. Okay, well, it turns out in the screenings that the anti-military uh, themes in the film did not play play well in Red State America. And, uh, and the one theater you showed it in. That's correct. Okay. A thousand theaters. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I don't know. I just hear it didn't play well in Red State America. People tell me things, I believe them. So, um, <laughs> so and, and we, can't, we can't afford to lose Red State America right now because, frankly, they are terrifying. And uh, so I'm afraid I'm, we, we are, we, we are going we're, we're gonna to do a studio cut of the, of, the, uh, of, of the show in which all, all references to, uh, to the military-industrial complex being bad are removed, which uh, is my understanding. We don't have the final cut yet, but I've been told by, uh, by the editors who've done the, the initial run that this final cut removing the anti-military uh, themes will be, uh, let's see here, it says one minute and 41 seconds long. So there we go. Okay, uh, so <laughs> your new film is just comprised of things setting up the other films. Um, in one minute and 47 seconds. So, uh... 41 seconds! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh. 41 seconds! 47 Sorry. seconds! What do you think I'm made of? So, uh... This film becomes... Basically, most people forget that it's an actual film and just goes around on YouTube as the trailer for your 50s cinematic universe. Because that's basically just what it is at this point. Um, it's the exact wrong time. And, like, people post, like, hey, this was an actual movie, and everyone thinks they're joking. Uh, so, yeah, uh, your trailer for this other universe does fine. Most people think The I Dream of Genie is your first movie now. Um, and so, there you go. Fawn, the Fawn's Shark Jumper is still your most successful film, ironically. And, uh, yeah, I think we're just going to end it there. Um, y you, you do make your $75 back, still, plus whatever. Success. Uh, Jacob, you... Uh, need to change your name. So, um, <laughs> who is Jacob? Exactly. My name is Rodney Chocolate. <laughs> All right, and so, uh, so yeah, that's our uh, movie. Um, a dab will do, and we're gonna a dab will do it. A dab will do it. I'm, I'm so sorry. It's a, it's a play on a local anyway. And so we're it's gonna end as we always do with a quote of wisdom from our patron saint Jaden Smith. Los Angeles is a is a upside poem with light. <laughs> it sure that's, is. That's the first movie we made that Dad will do it. I'm going to make another one and switch up the rules. Can I write a bunch of points? Yes. Sure. Matt is going to be the writer for... I don't know why we're I don't know why we're switching either. Yeah. But change places! Yeah. No room, no room. Sierra pressure. I'll forget which order you're in if I don't say well, Matt is right. writing. I'm Matt, writing. Matt is writing. Yeah. All right. I'll direct. You're directing and then producing. Okay. So we're still not in the right order. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. Uh, it's time for our second episode live at Die Laughing 2019. Uh, just a little tidbit of, of information. We first came to the show four years ago uh, when we had a total of five episodes recorded, and they still let us do a, a fun live show. Uh, it was at four in the morning, though, so... That was fun, um, but we're, we're very glad we're back again. We've done one every year since, and uh, we, we love you guys. We're, we're excited. So, uh, without further ado, uh, we have three Hollywood experts here who are going to help us craft a movie for us. 
uh, very fast using a random suggestion from the internet. We have this marvelous printout from our movie machine, which can give us some uh, information for them to work with. Uh, but first, let me introduce our experts. Uh, we have our writer, Matt Kesson, who we found in the bushes outside of Guillermo del Toro's house. We yep. have our director. I get mail there. It's true. <laughs> we have our director, Kyle Decker, uh, who is the curator of James Franco's art gallery. And we have our producer, Ben Lifson, who is the uh, self-proclaimed uh, archivist of the Nickelodeon channel's archives. James Franco's uh, art collection is just a bunch of artistically rolled blunts. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. So, the theme of your story is a dark caper. The main characters are a happy martial artist mm -hmm. and a courageous psychologist. The major event of the story is political conflict. Do you need that again? No, no, I don't think so. Um, because I'm not going to pay attention to very much of it. So, um, my my, uh, my 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 pitch is uh, my my pitch is Gamera, guardian of the multiverse, <laughs> and uh, and a, a new a new Gamera arises, and he's a what was the first thing? I do need that again. Uh, he's a dark caper. Uh, uh, yeah, the right. characters are a happy martial artist. Right, right, right. So, just right. A, a, new, a new young Gamera appears in in in, in Japan, um, and he is and he is he's, he's, he is as Gamera frequently is very very cheerful and uh, and unlike previous iterations of Gamera, which were of course all about brute strength, this one this one is more more about finesse and the, and and the martial arts. Um, <laughs> He is a sidekick who is who is uh, who is who is a, an attractive young psychologist, um, but uh, but th and, and this is his origin story where, where where he first is mutated by by radiation and uh, and learns the martial arts and is a turtle. We've seen this before, but now it's Gamera, so it's all completely different. Um, but in his troubles with his initial with his initial. Uh, his, his his origin and with his with his initial coming into the responsibilities of the Gamera name, Gamera's from other universes. The Gamera from the nineteen sixties films appears in, in in our Gamera's universe. The Gamera the Gamera from the nineteen nineties reboot where everything is very dark and gritty and terrifying. Um, Appears and the Gamera from Gamera the Brave. After that, which was again for uh, which was again children's children's films, all appear. And then of course Gamera Ham. So uh, the um, so they all team up and uh, and 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 fight fight Gaos, which is which is which is the Gamera villain, and uh, and it's and it's and it's and it's a very fun sort of upbeat movie because because most of them are Gameras and Gamera is a friend to all children. Um, there's the '90s Gamera who murders people indiscriminately, and so there's some there's some there's some wacky hijinks to do with that. Um, but uh, but other than that, other than that, I think we're yeah. That's that's uh, that's that's what I got. Do you have a title for this film? Yeah, Gamera, Guardian of the Multiverse. That's right. Okay. So, Kyle, you've got a script for Gamera, Guardian of the Multiverse. Uh, it uh, arrives via a giant beam from the sky, depositing it next to your window. Uh, what, what do you think? You learn things outside of Guillermo del Toro's window. Uh, I, I think this is great. I mean, the world is ready for more modern kaiju movies. I mean, Kong Skull Island was a hit. Um, that that uh, Godzilla movie that came out that Gareth Edwards said was borderline watchable, and we're getting the other one, the trailer that had Rodan in it. So, like, why not? Let's make a Gamera, all of the Gamera's multiverse thing. Uh, I, I do, I, I, I'm i gonna do what Sony did, though, and make, make this bad boy animated, because we can have some real fun, do some cool action scenes, and not worry about the budget as much. But one of the exciting things we're going to do, especially with the older original Gamera's, we're actually going to we're going to build the full city sets and everything, and get the actor in the rubber suit and do the fighting. But then we're going to rotoscope it all, <laughs> so all the scenes with that, because each one's going to have their own unique animated style. So the classic ones are going to be rotoscoped, old 1950s stuff, maybe even black and white. We'll do some black and white animation. There'll be hints of color when they get upgraded, but it'll be very, you know, like the the old school film coloration style with a more limited palette and everything. Uh, one of the Gameras will be very anime style with the action lines and everything, and, 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 and maybe one of them will have a cool laser sword or something that they can like form by putting different pieces of a mechanical robot together to fight and everything. And uh, they're, I like that. So like style-wise, we're going to animate it and everything, and we're just going to get some they're going to mostly scream, but some of them will talk, and we need to get some good voice actors for this. 
So uh, uh, bringing up Mark Hamill to be the voice of our villain. Um, just He does evil really well, he'll be great. Um, and because it's a big monster movie and it's Hollywood, we gotta put Sam Jackson in this bad boy. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, if we get PG-13, I want him to drop his one signature motherfucker in the middle of it, maybe when he's smashing the bad guy. And that'll be our one use of the F word. And it'll be with a mother, uh, Sam Jackson. Uh, we can't have all dudes in the movie though, so uh, I'm gonna have Tina Fey do the voice for all the lady characters, and that's literally we're just gonna pay three voice actors to do all the voices of all the characters in the movie. We're gonna spend the rest of the money to hire the entire animation team from Into the Spider Verse and give them all a 15% pay increase so they even work their asses off harder to make one of the coolest looking movies ever. And then uh, we're gonna get all the best hip hop, modern hip hop artists to do the soundtrack. So we just have a slap in the soundtrack, and that's what I got. All right, so our producer, Ben, you've got a in no way derivative uh, Gamera uh, <laughs> that is a, a reboot. It's an original idea. The Gamera uh, universes together. What are you thinking? What kind of budget are you thinking for these guys? Okay, so working at Nickelodeon for so long and looking through all of their 90s films, I think we really need to bring that style back as well. So first off, you know what? For, I want to say Gamera's friend to all children. Not PG-13, we gotta go PG. Uh, so we need to do the PG equivalent of that bad word, which I can't say because I'm on contract. Uh, also, Nickelodeon, we, if we're doing this, we need to have a scene where they make a big mess, you know, lots of splats and splatters and, oh no, they, I dropped this bucket of goo because it's giant monsters. They have goo, right? Uh, no, I have goo in the script. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, pies. Can you have a kaiju pie fight? Like there could be um, the world's largest pie not yes, contest. but hell yes. So uh, we need to have that in the film, Pie Fight. Um, rotoscoping is extremely creepy. So uh, I assume you just meant that as a metaphor, though. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's. Oh, yeah. Um, now, another thing we need to get from all these old Nick movies is we need them to, get, to get really punchable guest stars. OK, just like, you know, guest stars who don't necessarily, you're just like, hey, I'm this person. So if you can do some scenes of that, um, that'd be great. Uh, I'm gonna give you uh, 50 mil, cause you know, you don't have to pay animators much. Uh, and you know, I'm really excited to working with the team that brought Spider-Verse and Emoji Movie. So I think that we will find just the perfect blend of that. Um, also, <laughs> also, can you get uh, Shaq in this film? I, there's literally, a, yeah, there's no Shaq here. I think there's literally emoji to describe the style you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, I want this to be a fun PG film. Um, uh, yeah, Gamera is uh, Gam. You know what? Call it Gamera is friend to all children. Okay. Because, and, you know, children can be an acronym for multiverse, I don't know. Uh, that's your writer, if you can think of a children acronym, uh, that'd be great. But yeah, you know, just have a fun, silly time. All right, so we're going to throw it back to our writer, Matt. You have some detailed changes from your studio here. And get Shaq in there. Uh, you've got some budget, you've got some new roles to write. What do you think? I love them. I, I was going to put a giant pie fight in it, but I thought the studio wouldn't go for it. So this is... This is just a dream come true for me. Um, the uh, I'm 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 working. I'm 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 I've got a team of experts working around the clock and coming up with an acronym for children, meaning multiverse. Uh, so far, we have that the first word is cross cross something, um, but we'll get we'll we'll get back to that. No, this is this is this is delightful. Um, I I I'm I'm not entirely thrilled about the uh, about the name change. I think Guardian of the uh, Guardian of the, of the Multiverse was. Uh, was uh, you know what I was what I was what I, what I was aiming for as far as the, the feel of the thing, um, but uh, no, I uh, this this sounds this sounds perfect. I couldn't be and Shaq Shaq working on something that I wrote is the, the world truly so wonderful. <laughs> All right, so Kyle, you, you, you've got a new script. You got some new changes. Sure. What do you think? Yeah, this is great. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> studio enabled my creative vision, and I'm just going to mail this one in. As a, they, they want punchable faces, and, and they want to get rid of 
rotoscoping, which is one of the most beautiful things in animation ever. Um, I'm gonna go cry myself to sleep at my altar to Ralph Boschke uh, each night. It's, yeah, I'm, 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 I'll be okay. Um, <laughs> one thing we're gonna do though, is we're gonna actually have all these punchable celebrity faces in it, and we're gonna have Shaq, because when I want Shaq's giant meaty hands to, to actually punch these people, but Shaq will be wearing the Gamera suit while he punches them, and we'll do close-ups of all their faces, and like do the multiple, you know, Rocky shot, where we, you know, we cut multiple times with them going <laughs> with their cheeks flying to the left, and, and I've lined up a whole list of punchable celebrities that will have as characters that they fight, and it's gonna remember we have Shia LaBeouf and Chris Pratt, because he killed all the Avengers, and he's a weird right-wing Christian, so yeah. Jeremy Piven, Mark Wahlberg, Pete Davidson. I think you're noticing a trend on the these dudes. The just, demographic, yeah. The demographic. Um, and, and yeah, we're just gonna line them up and, and do that. Maybe we'll have both Wilson brothers <laughs> do that as well. And just punch them and then we can get... Uh, uh, just to clarify, what are these punchable celebrities' roles in the movie? Uh, so, so one of the stories, while the, the, the Gamera Guardians are, are forming their team and all, uh, they have to do it in a, uh, a, a monster fighting ring, and a, a great overlord of the galaxy has assembled all the Gameras and all the punchable celebrities and given the punchable celebrities some kind of gamma radiation to make them 12 stories tall and strong, and they have to fight. The gamma radiation monster. makes you like 8 feet tall and green, man. Come on. Okay, act, act like it got some the, sense. Okay, the radiation from from <laughs> from the United States experimenting near Japan. And there it is. Uh, and because uh, it's a metaphor for pollution or something, and and they're gonna fight in a big wrestling ring. So it's gonna be basically like luchador wrestling, but with giant Gamera monsters against giant punchable celebrities. And we're just gonna have Gamera beat the crap out of all these people. That's gonna be most of the movie. Can we get? Can we get? Can we get Jeff Goldblum playing space Jeff Goldblum as the guy who overlooks oversees the whole thing? If we can get permission, if we can just literally have him reprise his role as, as, as space Jeff Goldblum, as the yeah. Grandmaster again, and it's maybe it's just the arena on Shakar. We we can just do that, and we just do a Shakar movie where it's Gamera fighting punchable celebrities. I am so. Happy I mean, right well, now. Gam Gamora is already in the universe, but um, G Gamora, I'm wow. Okay, so producer, uh, you've got some interesting ideas from your, your writing and directing team uh -huh. here. What do you think is that working for you, and what we need to, what needs to happen before this yeah. goes out the door? So you know, I got some great ideas for Gamora. Our Gamora is friends to all cross horizon interdimensional laser disruptor event <laughs> nexus. Um, you got our letter. All good. Yeah. So I, I think that'll uh, be good. Um, I just really want to. Well, first off. Uh, I didn't adjust your budget for voice acting, so you still only have three voice actors uh, to voice all of the celebrities. Um, Tina Fey is Shaq. Right. <laughs> so, um, so uh, don't, uh, I just we'll, love the idea of Mark Hamill doing all the voices of punchable male celebrities. Yeah, you'd be you'd be amazed how much less you have to pay people if you don't use their voices. Like they're still there, but you don't have to pay them as much because I have an idea how to save even more money. We just buy rights to their likenesses and then hire Andy Circus to mocap all the fights and we just paint all of these punchable people's faces onto Andy Circus's mocap suit. Mm. Well, we're having well, we are having people in suits. And just yes. just Andy Circus. That's it. Um, well, well, we already got them. We don't even need a costume budget because everything's digitally painted. We, we already got them. So. Oh. Okay. But but thank you. Uh, for your, idea. I just um, to save you money. Now, so I need to admit, I need to spend enough to write this off. Um, so now, um, just one little thing that I forgot to get from my Nickelodeon experience is we want this to have a timeless feel, and you know, um, so this could be of any time, and so let's put in lots of dated references because the past was a time, and so it's timeless, right? So um, you know, let's. Put it, <laughs> So let's. I think I'm dumber from having to. <laughs> so you know, um, let's put in some MySpace jokes. Uh, who let the dogs out needs to be in there. Um, that was in every Nickelodeon movie. Um, uh, one way or another. Uh, and wild thornberries. <laughs> they, 
they had two, I love Wild Thorn Man. I know, they had two movies, so apparently they must have been Nickelodeon's most successful franchise. All right, and... Um, oh, excuse me, Rugrats had three movies. So. Yeah, but Wild Thornberries was in one of the Rugrats movies. That is true. It was their crossover, because they were stranded on Desert Island. All right, um, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, Gamora, Gamora and... Gamera is friends to cross rise an interdimensional laser disruptor event nexus is good to go. All right, so I'm gonna plug this into the movie machine and uh, pull the lever, which uh, sounds like, uh, I don't know, GAC or some other Nickelodeon bullshit. Um, so this movie does okay, uh, plays really well with like kids. That's the best for a Nickelodeon film. That's yeah. what we're going for. <laughs> It it's plays, a high bar for Nickelodeon. <laughs> it plays really well for kids, uh, and like the, the parents of kids are kind of just like, ah, whatever, it's better than the Emoji Movie. Um, <laughs> that, is, all emoji that movies. is also the goal yeah. for uh, Nickelodeon. It is, it is significantly worse than Spider-Verse, oh. uh, and the, the various different Gamera properties that you've, you've put in it, uh, the, the owners of those properties are not super thrilled with the way that their material has been treated. Uh, but there are some good moments. Uh, the, the voice actors really got to have a lot of fun with it and get weird. And they, they all, you know, say positive things on, on talk shows. So the people go and see the movie regardless. Uh, even if it's not spectacular, you guys do okay. Um, you, you about, about break even, but you're kind of floating in the middle there. This isn't really considered a profitable movie. It's just considered a movie that did okay. Um, the the end of all things, and after you know five or six years, most people just kind of forget. So about we don't it. get extended universe or sequels. No. Damn it. Uh, but that said, the movie machine is magic. Uh, we can take a look back and change one last thing before uh, the the prediction goes through, or you know you can call it art and defend that decision too, and the movie machine will just interpret that as well. So you have a couple more minutes each here. We'll begin with our writer. Okay, I just need to back up to something that was said earlier, which was that the goal was to make it better than the Emoji Movie. Um, it is my understanding that the goal of a sucking chest wound is to be better than the Emoji Movie. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 it's just, the bar seems a little low, that's all. Um, but as far as changes, I mean, I, I, uh, this is, this is, I, I don't know, I'm just so excited that, that, that my vision or something vaguely resembling it or not at all resembling it, but named after it is, uh, is up there on the glittering big screen and uh, I wouldn't change a thing. I am extraordinarily happy. I'm sad that Gamera isn't in it anymore. Um, is Gamera still in it? I couldn't tell. Um, the animation was not what I was hoping for, but, uh, so and that's a little disappointing as well, and the lack of camera, and the psychologist character, like the psychiatrist character, and Tina Fey. I wish I could have worked with Tina Fey, and and all the all the gratuitous references to Donald Trump. I guess I didn't like those either. But otherwise, I'm super happy. All right, so director, uh, anything you would change or anything you want to uh, adjust here? Yeah, I'm sorry I let all those references to Donald Trump in the movie <laughs> just kind of like brought a pallor down to, on everything. I want to just remove that entirely. It's a kid's movie. Politics don't belong in kids' movies. That's, I, I don't, it's just a movie where we just beat up a bunch of entitled looking white guys. I don't, there's no politics involved in that. <laughs> um, I do and, support the inclusion of Louis C.K. though. Oh, you forgot to add him? Yeah. Like, we are an extended slow motion shot of him just repeatedly getting punched in the stomach. Uh, uh, I, I really want to fight harder for Gamera, and I, your Gamera, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce it this morning. We're calling uh, it Gamera to avoid Gamera. copyright now. Uh, well, well, let's, we're going to do a deal about the hammer. Uh, Here's like how we're going to secure the rights, and we're going to be down. You, you know, the, the owners of these properties, you know, they make the big bucks through the merchandising. So we're gonna, I'm gonna have our sweet ass Spider Verse animators help us design the most badass kaiju action figures ever out of our giant turtle, fire breathing turtle friend who flies by shooting energy out of his turtle holes in the rear. Or spinning. Or spinning. Yes. Uh, and one of one of the one of the uh, one of the action figures will be the deluxe version where where it basically can do that. It's basically a drone toy. Where, where everything retracts and it flies around with glowing LEDs and it spins and you can control it with your smartphone with a downloaded app. And that's all like $300. That's the one that all the 
the tech nerds will buy to like fly around their tech offices and everything. But then the rest of the action figures will be articulated. And then all the entitled white dudes will make action, like the rubberized WWF action figures from the 80s. And then kids can just like reenact them getting beat up by our, by our giant turtle kaiju action figures. And we're gonna make so much money. And I'm pretty sure the rights holders will be down for that because of the amount of money they'll make from selling toy rights. All right, so producer, uh, you've got some changes here. Yeah. What do you think? Last well, chance before it goes into the I mean, toy change. rights is the name of the game here. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Um, you know, I, you know, we really targeted this uh, demographic here and, you know, got it here in the States. Um, now, for people who know who gay, or got, that guy is, um, yeah, I understand we're disappointed. So we're going to make a slightly different version in Japan. We're uh, going to recut it there. Um, that's going to be the R-rated version. Uh, so that one is going to have the Sam Jackson swearing, but in Japanese. Like, you know, and we'll get like three... I'm pretty sure the F word is pretty universal. Exactly. At this point, so, um, and, and we'll get like three, you know, big Japanese voice actors to voice everybody. We're sticking with three. All countries can only have three voice actors in this film. That's in the contract. Um, so we're not having the Sam Jackson F-bomb because we're having Japanese actors? I'm confused. I mean, we'll get whatever the Japanese equivalent of Samuel L. Jackson is. Um, I don't know who that is. There's but... no equivalent to Samuel L. Jackson. Well, you know what? You know what? We'll, we'll teach him then. We'll give him some classes. I'm sure he, he can do it. He, Next he's... thing you know, what, we're going to have a white guy. So anyway, um, so now... I would go for Sonny Chiba if I was a Sure. Person. I was going to say beat Takashi myself. But anyway. Sure. I don't know who does, but I'm agreeing with that. Okay. <laughs> so, and finally, uh, you know, we're going to make it like R-rated in Japan and other countries. And, you know, you know, we can do that because all the slime and gook that we did was green. So we can just green screen that to be red. And then it's R-rated because now they're spilling blood over everyone. And them laughing over, oh, this is such a mess, is now really creepy because they're laughing about blood. And you know, so it's psychological now too. Um, and yeah, so those are my changes. Uh, keep everything here in the states exactly the same, but you know, just try to trick people in other countries into thinking it's a completely different movie. And uh, hopefully that'll work. All right, so I'm going to plug everything back into the movie machine here uh, and pull the lever once again. Uh, so a few things stay the same. The movie overall does about the same. Performs a little bit better overseas. Uh, but the really big change is what happens with the toys. We spent a lot of time trying to look for, like, somebody to pick this up, but the, the Japanese studios who've gotten the license, licensing rights from uh, really put the kibosh on a lot of that. Uh, however, you do find somebody who owns a toy line and has a soft spot for monsters and goop. And that man is Todd McFarlane, the creator of Spawn. I think hey. that, if he legally change his name now, it, like, you, it's his legal name is not Todd McFarlane, it's... Todd McFarlane, the creator of Spawn. <laughs> That's correct, yes. So, um, the, the action figures that come out of Todd McFarlane's studio are fucking incredible. Uh, they're like the, the best toys around. Incredible articulation, really great sculpts, um, and they become a collector's item basically instantaneously overnight. Um, so, the, the various different figures of the versions of Gamera and like... Uh, the extra goop packs that you can buy to go with them uh, sell very, very well. Um, and who knew that you know Nickelodeon would ever team up with Todd McFarlane? But when they did, it's the goopiest, weirdest, most delightful monsters ever. And I'm going to make a Nickelodeon Spawn movie. <laughs> well, OK. Uh, I guess we'll have to save that for another episode, folks, because it looks like we're just about out of time. Uh, but as always, wait. Gonna... Should we all switch switch seats for no reason one last time? Yeah, sure. Let's do right, it. Change yeah, yeah. places. I was... All right, fine. <laughs> sit down. We're just hey, it's it's a podcast. We totally just changed spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, really right, fast. Right, uh, future Jacob, when you edit this, maybe add some yakety sex. <laughs> and uh, just just enough to avoid copyright. Infringement. Yes, I th that might be public domain. Yakety sex. How much is too much? <laughs> so as always, we're going to end our episode with a quote of wisdom from our current patron saint, Jaden Smith. Can we skip to the cuddling? <laughs> Thanks for coming. Wait, I, that totally lives for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank one more hand for Matt Kessin, you guys here. Uh, this is a fundraiser. Remember, you can buy challenges for folks and help fearless reach our goal. Thank you. 
Keep it going! Yes! No, they keep it, yeah, that... Movie Machine Podcast, everyone! Yeah. There we go.